You have the floor. Well, thank you very much um, to the delegates uh, of the diplomatic body and um, international organizations, also to the distinguished participants from the government. Uh, today I'll be providing my remarks regarding uh, Chile and, uh, and the a workshop we had recently regarding uh, the South, Ameri South American uh, issues on human mobility and climate. Next slide, please. If you, if you think there's a common, uh, common uh, thread within the, what we're doing today as a government in Chile is to address inequality. And also, one of the main uh, issues of inequality that we're facing today is uh, environmental justice. And um, this is a, a major, uh, major uh, source of conflict today, and we feel that this also would entail uh, climate issues. Next slide, please. Uh, and I think, um, that, well, as President Bachelet says, you know, future generations will not only measure us by the environmental, by the economic development we reach, but also by how we are able to face uh, climate change. Uh, she said that in the UN uh, summit. Next slide, please. Uh, and I just wanted to say this is brand new information we got from a survey we, we did nationally uh, this last month regarding the, the, the support on, on climate change and awareness. And today, we, this is something that is very new. Uh, we have a national survey that says around 86% of the people think that climate change is man-made. It affects our daily life today, so it's not nothing. It's not something that you could look into the future, but actually today. And in the last that came out of the slide, it says that 78% um, pe people say that it's our generation's biggest. Uh, environmental challenge. And this is, and I've done this type of survey before uh, I was uh, vice minister, and these are the numbers that are consistent, actually a little bit higher. So we have large support and we are uh, called to action within our own constituency. Next slide, please. Uh, if you look at, um, if you look at obviously just going through some some general data, obviously today, uh, this is based on observations, this is James Hansen's paper on 2012, uh, Proceedings of National Academy of Sciences, showing that temperature uh, frequency of extreme events are much higher, uh, and this means that today the area that, that is under heat anomalies, for example, uh, covers 10% of the global area, uh, land area, whereas uh, 50 years ago this used to be only 0.2%. Uh, so this means that uh, in terms of observation, extreme weather is much more common. Next slide, please. And obviously, if you look into different uh, emission scenarios and using uh, the ensemble global circulation models uh, for the IPCC report, the fifth assessment, you can see that this shows that there will be an increase in temperature and decrease in, in, temp in, uh, in uh, precipitation in many locations in South America, and this will have an impact. Next slide. And if you, we look at uh, Chile's economy, Chile's economy is, uh, there's large issues on on the vulnerability towards climate change on mining. Today, mining projects are largely uh, having a supply from water desalination, and this uh, drives up energy demand and is also a, a recipe for social conflict. Agriculture today uh, will, be, will be affected. We have a decrease of up to 15% of precipitation according to our regional climate models. Uh, our water sources are coming from the Andes Mountains, and this also will be affected. And also environmental health overall can be affected. So we are economically, socially, and environmentally vulnerable towards climate change. Next slide, please. And if we start looking into specifics, this, this is something that in the north of Chile is a common issue, and there's a lot of reform going on within our government today uh, to address this issue. Today, our water sources are coming mostly from uh, snowpack in the Andes Mountains. So as the isotherm, of the, of the zero temperature isotherm uh, shifts, the amount of water that we could uh, we could hold is much smaller, and as the glaciers retreat, also our natural reservoirs are also affected. And also, there's an increase of the extreme uh, events. And, and if you look at the during the driest season, the dry season will actually be longer, uh, and the flows will be smaller. Next slide, please. And if you look at across most of our different uh, you know, northern Chile, uh, or central Chile, or southern Chile, uh, this is something that we are going to see much more normal. And this, right now, at this point, we're doing a large reform on, a, on our water rights um, uh, uh, framework, and also uh, we're working on glacier, glacier
special uh, uh, framework to protect glaciers uh, within uh, within our uh, a, a law that does this uh, all together. Next slide, please. Uh, so. Chile, you know, overall, I, I came from the academic side before, and I was much more critical. But uh, uh, before, but in the end, to be truthful, I think uh, if we look around and if you look at other action of other countries, obviously we uh, we have been pretty active. And, and one of the things that we what we have been doing is uh, working on this national climate change adaptation plan, and uh, this biodiversity uh, area um, agency that we're going to be uh, generating within this uh, next government and this glacier protection law, which is something that really is uh, very, um, a very big challenge since we will have to um, uh, con uh, have a conciliation between one of our major activities, which is mining and obviously water resources. Uh, so this is going to be not without conflict. But um, but we're looking for, a, a, in terms of mitigation, uh, more ambition regarding to our commitment in Copenhagen of 20% with respect to uh, the business as usual by 2020. Next slide, please. Um, and one of the things that I just wanted to say that sort of goes with this issue of environmental justice, and I, and I, and I guess we didn't, we weren't able to frame it as well as um, the, the Climate Reality Project in terms of what we were doing. We're collecting um, uh, uh, tax on power generation uh, with local and global pollu uh, pollution. We're basically going from five tons uh, uh, dollars per ton of CO2 and with a variable cost uh, of externality estimated on the health effects on the population that's exposed to a large power plant. So, and the funding will go to actually one of our main reforms, which is the educational reform. So inequality is still an issue that we will address and this, in this case uh, uh, within the polluter pays principle. Next slide, please. And this will reduce our emissions by 11% with our power sector by 2030, I think it's a good, it's a good um, balanced carbon tax that we are putting together. Next slide, please. And we also did one on our oh, we did a fee bait system, except we didn't have a rebate on the on the on the cars. So we will tax uh, cars based on their fuel efficiency and their NOx emissions, correcting uh, some of the other taxes that you, we've seen abroad that have led to larger diesel uh, NOx emissions. So we were looking to uh, actually fund. Um, some of our programs within these carbon taxes on the transportation and generation sector, which are the ones that we project to have the largest increase within the next years. Next slide, please. And um, just a, a, a thing on, on energy. Today, er, clean energy is being much more the norm than uh, the exception. And we, President Bachelet says, we need energy for growth, but we need this energy to be sustainable. Otherwise, we are um, putting at risk the future of, of, of future generations. Next slide, please. And uh, so just to show you a, a little how fast things are going, uh, almost a little bit more than a year ago, we put a uh, solar PV system on on our uh, government headquarters, uh, the campaign headquarters, and six months later, nine months later, we're actually installing what seems to be the most uh, common thing. To, to week by week, we're install, installing what is called the largest regional, largest national, largest something uh, PV system, in, in, and which is really great because it's growing and growing. And if you look into the general numbers, next slide, please. Uh, we'll, we are, and this is something that the U.S. has done, this is something that China has done, but Chile is also doing today. Uh, we are, we actually, to the date, we are, have installed the same installed capacity of all our renewable energy to date. So this is a very good uh, a, a economic activity associated to renewable energy. Next slide. And obviously, we see that there's uh, some uh, great activity going on internationally. I think we are building momentum for an international agreement with the addition of China and the U.S. Uh, to be uh, um, uh, with, a, uh, with an intention to be looking into an international uh, climate deal. Next slide. So, and just uh, something that we do uh, lead regionally in, in, in um, South America is Principle 10, which has to do with this migration and climate change issue. Uh, we believe that we need to promote environmental justice through participation and access to information. And one of the access of information is to have people know 
uh, what the impacts of climate change will be to their own community so they could prepare. And this is done with a lot of transparency. So we adhere to many uh, transparencies of law, uh, law transparency. So therefore, all our, our um, activities are, um, are uh, under public scrutiny, and we believe that's very important. All our environmental emissions, all our air quality, everything is out in the open, and anybody in Chile could, could uh, access that information. Um, and I usually respond to those uh, those requests myself. Next slide, please. Uh, so, and we did a, a, in, a, in October 28th, we did a workshop in South America on climate change and immigration. And we had multiple ministries uh, ranging from different um, topics, for example, the environment, foreign affairs, and obviously ministries of health, because we need to be looking into, uh, into health uh, issues and, and the spread of disease within uh, climate change, obviously. Uh, and we have to also acknowledge that South America has a large urban population, but very segregated with a lot of inequality. And this makes uh, natural disaster management a, a more difficult to be reaching the most vulnerable um, communities. Next slide. And some of the recommendations that came from this was to, first off, uh, better understand the interaction between immigration and climate change. Today, uh, for South America, we still are in the headlines stage of what we believe the, 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 the link could be. And we, did, we need, do need to have better numbers on the table regarding uh, this link between immigration and climate change. Uh, we need to have common terminology, basically speaking the same thing. We need to raise awareness regionally on the issue. We need to be looking at the other social and economic drivers for immigration today, because obviously there's confounding uh, variables that so we could really identify what is the signal related to climate change. And we need to uh, identify which is the most vulnerable population within the immigrant uh, sector. Next slide, please. If, and so well, we also need to be looking at to have better policy in terms of immigration and climate change. And this really is going to be related to our sustainable development, uh, development goals. Uh, and we, we, the, we need to be looking, obviously, into the uh, fighting inequality and the eradication of poverty. But also, we need to have better uh, capacities on natural disaster management. This is something that we are uh, developing in Chile. And I think uh, probably the, the overall in South America, there is much to be gained in terms of uh, capacity building on natural disaster management and humanitarian relief. And also, we need to be also supportive of all, protecting the, the climate immigrants or immigrants over rights. Uh, this, that's a picture of the fire that we had uh, in March uh, 2015 in Valparaíso, uh, and we could see how vulnerable a whole large population could be to this fire uh, due to land, bad land use planning. Uh, we had uh, thousands of people displaced uh, due to this fire. Next slide, please. And so overall, we need to acknowledge that our areas, our urban areas, are, are vulnerable to climate change uh, and land and, and water scarcity. Overall, we have an issue of inequality, poverty, and so zones that are vulnerable to adaptation, um, I mean, that are, that are difficult to, uh, to make adaptation measures uh, be adopted. And um, we need to actually address this issue on a more national, uh, regional scale with the Mercosur, UNASUR, and CELAC frameworks, uh, because it's something that may not be on our uh, larger policymakers' radar. Next slide, please. And so finally, we, we need to know that, um, that we are vulnerable to climate change as a region uh, for multiple reasons. Um, mostly inequality and poverty makes us more vulnerable to this. Uh, the way that our, our cities are laid out makes that segregation, mountain terrains, water availability, and coastal cities make this area also very vulnerable to, uh, to uh, climate change, uh, and we need to make adaptation uh, be implemented. We need to promote the better understanding re regarding the climate and immigration uh, link. And we also need to be looking uh, keenly into uh, issues regarding natural disaster management on the immigrant population. That's it. Thank you.